say hey guys welcome I am um, <clears throat> I'm in my four-year-old's bedroom hiding because we have construction going on in the basement um, I feel like whenever I do live videos there's something going on that's loud so I had to move <laughs> away from the noise so that's why I'm up here hiding in my four-year-old's dinosaur basement or room um, I'll give you guys a few minutes to pop on. Give me a shout out when you get on here. Let me see some hearts or some likes or tell me where you're listening in from. It's noon on the East Coast. I thought maybe I could catch some of you on your lunch break if you work full time or maybe your kids are napping if you're home. I see Sean's on. Hey, Sean. Um, catching a little break from the kiddos possibly, whatever your day looks like. But I want to give you guys a few minutes to pop on and then I'm going to get going and, and, and share some exciting stuff with you. I... I want to share my story. I see my team popping on. Thanks guys for coming on and supporting and listening. They've heard my story a lot. So they're probably like, oh, here she goes again, sharing her story. But, um, hey Jenny, but I want to make sure that, um, I love, love the opportunity of being able to share with this network and being able to give you guys tips and tools and strategies to have you run. You guys, this is the best business. The best business ever. Oh, snowy Connecticut. Hey, my family's in Massachusetts. So, um, and we've got a really big New England based team. So, way to go, Patriots. I had to lock my cat out. My cat's name is Tom Brady, and I had to lock him out. Of course, he was named after his daddy. Um, but I had to lock him out because he likes to play front and center. So kick him out. Hey, Emily. Love you too, lady. But um, I'll give you guys just another minute to pop on. And I want to get going. And I actually, my team's going to be so impressed because I actually have some notes. So I can stay on track today. And those of you guys that know me on here know that I am a talker. And notes and organization, not my thing. Um, definitely, if you guys follow the gems, I'm a sapphire ruby. I love fun. I love competition um, and so I brought out the emerald in me so I can keep myself a little bit on track not talk your ear off and um, not keep you all day but I do want to share some important stuff with you so I'm gonna pop in we've say we've got quite a few people popping on here yep Emily I know you're impressed with my notes so all right so I want to um, <clears throat> I'm talking to you guys today about about fear. Uh, Keyshawn asked if I would jump on and, and share my story a little bit and talk a little bit about fear because she and I had a great conversation at our leadership re retreat in um, October and I was sharing a little bit with her about how I got here. You know, well, how is it that I, I, I've been able to grow a, a successful business um, in a short period of time and you know outside of it really being about my passion and it being about you know, people first and helping people, it, it came from a place of hate and it came from a place of fear. And, and that's really what it boiled down to for me. I'm a, I'm a former teacher. I have a degree in early childhood and a master's as an intervention specialist. I spent um, just about four years working in a preschool classroom. If I could have picked my perfect job, I would have been a kindergarten teacher that people might think I'm crazy, but I could spend all day with four and five year olds and have the most fun. Um, sometimes questionable when it's my own, you know, it's different when it's your own kids, but I thrived. That was like my arena. I, I, I always wanted to be a teacher. I was the little girl who always knew she wanted to be a teacher. My sister always wanted to be a lawyer. I always wanted to be a teacher and my sister's a lawyer and I got a teaching degree. Like we just, we have incredible parents who inspired us and challenged us, and I'll kind of share some of that too as it weaves into my story, but um, I always wanted to help people. Like that is my passion, it's in my soul. If I could stop and take a minute to make somebody's day a little bit brighter, I, I always do that. So I spent some time as an early childhood educator, but part of that position allowed me the opportunity to work with adult learners too. I was a lab school, so I worked at a university. We had um, adult learners in there, and I got to mentor them through like those really scary transitional years from I'm a college student and then like, oh crap, now I have to get a job, like I have to go to the real world. And I could so relate to that. And I knew I wanted to work with adult learners. It was at that point through that mission of being like my dream job, being a kindergarten teacher, to admit like, I wanna work with adults. I don't have really any skill set in adults, but I'm good with people. And then I transitioned to athletics and I started working as a learning specialist um, at, at, a, at a university helping um, mostly football and basketball, division one student athletes, 
you know, coordinate tutorial services and just really thrive. It was taking a problem and finding a solution. And I was in, I was in my place. I loved that job. My husband, I'm wearing my Notre Dame Go Irish shirt today because he is a college swim coach and recruiting coordinator and today's day one of their championship, so I'm supporting the hometown team. But uh, when we left that job, we moved to Virginia and that, you guys, that move was so hard for me. It was like the best opportunity for my husband, but it was such a big step backwards for me and where I felt like I was going on my career, where I felt like I was meant to be. I, have, I was in my place. I was great at my job and I was moving and I was going to sacrifice my career um, for my husband's dream. You know, like I, that's, I knew this was going to happen. I knew I was going to follow him on a couple of different moves and it wasn't a question. You know, I supported him. We moved to Virginia and we, we were there for five years and I will say that move for a lot of reasons was the best thing that ever happened to us because it it gave me this opportunity. It gave me Beachbody. It removed me from my dream position and put me in a place that I hated and I had no growth environment, okay? Without that move, I don't know that I would be here because I might still be sitting in my dream job. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, but I... That move was hard for us. We were at the point where we wanted to start our family and it just really got us thinking a lot. I couldn't work in athletics, but I mean, my husband's gone this week. He'll be gone next week. He's gone a lot. We both couldn't be in athletics and raise our family the way I want, we wanted. So that job that I took in Virginia placed me at a desk, unable to reach students in the way that I really wanted to. And I just, for the first time in 10 years, was bored. I was not in a growth environment. I was, I was told, I was treated like an employee and just told, Courtney, you are great here. Stay in your box. Don't leave it. Here's your checklist. This is what you're going to do. And um, I was bored. I was on the job one week and I had called my old boss and said, I, this is awful. Like people, there are people in this world that legitimately show up to work every day. Like you clock in, you clock out. I don't want to be one of those people. I watched, I watched my parents be those people and they told, they taught us about hard work and commitment, but they do not like their jobs. It is not a career. It put food on our table. They made a lot of sacrifices for us as kids and I'm so thankful for them, but I don't want to be at a job. I want a career. I want something I'm passionate about. I want my children to see me in a place where I love what I do and, and I do it because I want to, not because I have to. I watched my parents have to work every day and I, didn't, I don't want my kids to see that. That's not a, that's not a place where, you know, I just, you, you observe a lot as a kid, right? Like I, I, I just observe that. I still hear them talk about it, you know, about retirement and how, you know, that may or may never really come. I don't know. So anyway, that job I sat at, I was bored out of my mind and I kind of just took it as it's, you know, I said it is what it is. And I had that decision to make at the time because I didn't quite know about Beachbody yet. It hadn't quite entered my life. Um, I could find a new job. I mean, at this point now I'm a new mom. I can find a new job, which maybe will give me more fulfillment. Maybe I'll be less bored. But will it take me away from my family more, right? Because as it was, I'm a new mom and I'm spending one hour a day with my son. All I ever wanted to do was to be a mom and to help people. And to, in order to help people, which I really wasn't even helping anyone because my job was horrible. It was so boring. Um, like I had 250 students on my caseload and on any given week, I maybe saw 20, maybe. And I had to like beg them to come in and see me. It didn't make me feel good as an educator because it didn't make me feel like anyone needed or wanted my services. Um, and it just, I, I had like literally, I had nothing to do. Like, I mean, how many times can you organize a file cabinet? How many times can you like, research and try to find other things to do. There's like nothing to do. And my son is in daycare all day and I'm working a job that isn't even paying me well, is not utilizing my skill set, and I'm not with the one person that means the most to me, which was my son, one hour a day. I would leave at 7.15 a.m. for a 35 minute commute, 
he was still sleeping. My husband would do the morning routine and then um, I would get home. I'd pick him up at daycare about 5.45, 6 o'clock and he was in bed by 7. One hour a day I had with my son. That was not the vision I had for my life. That was not what I wanted and I needed to do something about it but I didn't know what. I was so afraid to apply for another job thinking, okay, this job is terrible but I have decent flexibility. You know, my husband travels a lot. So when the kid is sick, I can, you know, I have to take, like I took so many unpaid days of leave because I didn't have any paid days. I used them all for my maternity to leave since we were new in Virginia. I didn't have a lot of accrued time. My husband has meetings or he's traveling. So it was really all on me. And I just, I knew I couldn't do this, but I didn't know what the solution was. So I had been following some friends on Facebook, as many of you probably ended up here by following some friends, right? And they, you know, I hadn't talked to them in probably 13 or 15 years. It had been a long time. But I was, I saw their families and I started to see them post about their fitness journey. And I started to see them post about being inspired and being in a growth environment. And then one day, and I'll never forget this day, and I'll never forget where I was, and I'll never forget the impact that it had on me, but Carrie Legault posted her resignation letter from her teaching job. And it was at that point I realized Beachbody was a real opportunity. Beachbody was a vehicle to help me get out of that job. It was a vehicle to help me help people, to keep me inspired, to get me challenged, to get me adding value to other people, and to help myself. I had turned into a negative Nancy. I complained about everything. Walking to the bathroom was hard because it was too far, right? Like, it was maybe... I don't know, 50 feet and it was too far. Like I turned into that person in the office. I turned into the person I hated because I was bored and I was surrounded by people who were bored too and I needed a change. And so her posting her resignation letter showed me this is a legit opportunity. But I didn't reach out that day. I didn't. I noticed it. But I did not reach out that day. And I didn't reach out for a few months later. It took me time because... I was afraid. Fear set in. What if I'm not good at this? What will my friends think of me if I'm selling them stuff? What will my friends think if I'm just blowing up social media with these inspiring posts? That inspired me, you guys. I was watching the whole time, but I didn't want to drink a shake. I didn't want to be part of this, this beach body thing. Good for them. It's a great fit for them. It's not a good fit for me. Fear. That was fear sinking in. All of that was just fear, which I recognize now. So... I needed time and then one day because I just hated that job so much and I was sitting at my desk at lunch scrolling Facebook like I had done a lot because I was bored and there was nothing else to do they were at summit and they were having fun and they were inspired they were learning they were growing and they were loving what they were doing and it was at that moment I put Carrie Legault and Aaron Garapy, my upline coach, on a three-way message and just said, I don't know what you're doing, but I need to learn more. So when you guys get back, I need to have a phone call. And we did, and I signed up that day. And here's the thing. I, it took me, you guys, I watched for a year. It took me a year. And the whole time, the fear was there. But you want to know what I had to really think about, and this is what I, you know, I, I, I've been telling my coaches, right? You have to really think of fear on two sides because for me, there was the fear of following my passion and taking a chance on something that I didn't know anything about, but I wanted to learn. Or there was the fear of waking up 20 years from now, still sitting at that desk. That's fear. I didn't want to sit at that desk anymore. 20 years later, my children not having a relationship with their grandparents because we can't afford to go travel to see them. Having no relationship or time with their family because we can't travel. That's not in the budget. That's fear. Or then there's the fear of, um, you know, what if? What if I had reached out to Carrie and Aaron? What if I had just asked what they were doing? What if? That was fear, okay? Okay. The fear for me was the thought of not having the things that I needed, not having the time. Fear for me was in 20 years when my kid goes to college, will I look back and think, wow, we spent one hour a day 
In 18 years he lived in my roof, we had one hour a day together. That's awesome. That is not my vision. That was not what I wanted. But I had to take action. I had to say, don't worry about the things that scare me because until I put things in action, until I truly follow my passion of what I really want, the reality is that fear is exactly what I have right now. The fear of everybody growing up and me missing it. The fear of my parents no longer being here anymore and me never getting time to spend with them. The fear of never having enough income to to put into our savings account and always just getting by. The fear of my children watching me and thinking, wow, my mom went to work every day, but she didn't love what she did. She was bored. I don't want my kids to ever feel bored. I want them to take risks. I want them to, you know, follow their hopes and dreams. I want for them to to be confident in what they're doing and feel great about it and leave their mark on this world about something that they truly care about, not just to punch in and not just to show up every single day because that's what their parents did and that's what their grandparents did and that's what they have to do to put food on their table. No, there's another way. There's a way to do it that you can say, screw fear, I'm diving in, I'm going all in, I'm putting my blinders on. I don't care what my friends think. You know what? Because they'll join me eventually. Because they'll be on the other side of that screen at their job, uninspired, bored, watching me in a growth environment, watching me make my dreams come true. And they'll reach out and they'll say, I don't know what you're doing, but tell me about it. Because I'm afraid I'm going to miss my kid's life. I'm afraid that I'm never going to get a chance to be challenged. Or I'm afraid that I'm going to be bored for the rest of my life, you guys. That's fear. And at some point, you need to face it head on and decide, you know, is this your vehicle? How does Beachbody fit into your vision? Is it your vehicle to help you propel yourself to live the life you've always imagined? We needed a solution. I needed a solution. My goals with this opportunity, my short-term goals were some income because I didn't want to go back to that job anymore. But we couldn't do it without me replacing my income. We just financially, two educators, we just couldn't make it work. But I wasn't afraid of the process. I wasn't afraid of the work it was going to take. I was more afraid that I would wake up in 20 years and still be sitting at that desk because I didn't take a chance because I didn't ask more questions, right? And how many people can you think of like that, that are like that, the same way? I see their posts all the time on Facebook. Um, You know, it's snow days right now in Massachusetts. And um, I had a conversation with a woman today who we talked to and, you know, it has to be the right time. They have to see what's in it for them. And we talked and she said, I I don't don't wanna just have to have snow days to have time with my kids. Like, I, she's a teacher. She's like, "I, I don't, I don't want that. You know, I want more time with my family. And I can relate to that. I can put fear aside and I can share with her the opportunity that's here. Because for me, the fear was more of what was currently happening and that it was going to stay the same versus what I was going to have to do to get myself out of it. Because I knew I loved helping people. I knew that I was passionate about health and wellness. I knew I could truly influence people if I would just get out of my own way if I would just put my blinders on, stay in my own lane, not worry about what everybody else, everybody else is doing, and just share my story and just share my journey. Because my family was worth fighting for. They were worth fighting for more than one hour a day together. They were, you know, but that wasn't going to change unless I made a change. And changing a job may not have given me that solution. It would have buried me in more training, a new job, Uh, maybe a longer commute, maybe weekends. I didn't want that. I'd done weekends before when I worked in athletics. I wasn't going back to that. I knew exactly what I wanted and I knew this business was going to help me get there. So I buried myself in my passion. I dove in feet first. I transformed and then I helped other people transform. One person at a time, one month at a time. Uh, focus on, you know, I, for me, success club was a non-negotiable because for me, that was a measure of that. I'm reaching new people. I'm inspiring new people. And I'll share this with you guys, because I think it's important that, you know, whenever you guys hear from coaches that are, that are here and on this side, you know, we were all new coaches. Once we all struggled with the belief system of, will we be good at this? Can I do this? 
and I did let that I, I let that front and center for it for a really short period of time but here's what my husband said um, my husband is an amazing man and he's always been by my side and he's my number one supporter in all of this because he sees and believes in our mission he believes in what we do as a company um, I when I had that phone conversation with Aaron and Carrie at work and I came home and you know I I wanted to know first and foremost how much was it gonna how much was it gonna cost for me to start right we didn't have any extra money we two educators um, daycare rent I mean there really honestly was no money left at the end of the month there just wasn't and we weren't living an extravagant lifestyle by any means but that's just the reality of life as an educator which I would never change because that was all I knew about how I was going to share my passion of, of helping people, right? Um, and so we took the dogs for a walk with our son like we always do. And, and I told him, I said, you know, hey, I had a call today with, with some friends that I, I haven't talked to in a long time, but, but they're Beachbody coaches. And um, my husband was like, what's Beachbody? And I told him, you know, and I, you know, I'll, we probably know P90X and Insanity. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know that. I said, well, they're coaches. You know, they, they run online fitness groups. Um, they love the programs and products and, and they get results. And he said, well, what's it going to cost? And I said, it's and at this time, T25 had just come out. It was on promotion. And I said, it's $180 for me to get started. That's 30 days of Shakeology. That's my fitness program. They'll plug me into a group. I'm, we're going to commit. And I said, will you do it with me? I would. I, I want to do this transformation story with you. And he's like, absolutely. He's like, do you have to buy Shakeology every month? And I said, well, no, we'll cancel it by next month because we won't be able to afford it. But that's okay. Okay, we'll we'll just plug in um, I never canceled my Shakeology HD you guys we just use that as motivation to okay how do I now pay for this I have to find three people okay I'll do that um, we, so as we watch around the block and I said to my husband I said you know what if what if nobody joins me what if what if I don't inspire anybody what if I'm annoying on social media and he said Courtney at the end of the day if you are a healthier happier version of yourself you you'll be successful and he was so right. And I tell my coaches that, listen, our company is centered on helping you feel your best, helping you be amazing, and then pouring that into other people. And when you commit and you go all in to your transformation story, there's no way in heck you're not feeling incredible. And there's no way that you're not inspiring other people to get started too. That's what makes us unique, you guys. That's what really sets us apart from other companies is that you have to be willing to transform. You have to decide that you deserve this and you have to decide that you can be good at this and you have to decide that you are worthy of helping other people, that other people deserve your help. That's the go-giver approach, right? Like you have to be willing to accept other people wanting your help and you have to not be afraid to take it. You have to be willing to share your story and you have to be willing to know that you have everything and every tool that you possibly need to be successful in this business. When you invest in yourself and you work on your body and you fuel yourself from the inside out, when you work on your mind every single day, paired with a reason to keep going. For me, it was getting out of that job. I was not gonna wake up sitting in that chair a year later. I wasn't gonna do it. That was time with my kids, the clock was ticking, I was gonna buy back time, and I did. One year later, I left my job. I helped enough people to be able to retire myself from my education job. I retired myself from a life of being bored and uninspired and gave myself a life where I surround myself with people who are uplifting, people who challenge me, people who give me good ideas, um, people who support me, people who celebrate me. You know, like that's the mission and beauty of our company. But so many of you are letting fear sit in the front seat of your van that you're not going to get to this point. And so you have to make the decision to kick fear out of the driver's seat or the front seat and kick it to the back. And this is what I've been telling my team since I listened to that Elizabeth Gilbert um, podcast or that interview that we got to listen to as a success club reward a couple months ago. Maybe it was January. She said something that truly resonated with me, that put it into perspective and has become a way for me to be able to communicate with my team. And the expression is fear to the back of the van. And she says, you know, you're, you know, fear is a real thing, you guys. We should experience some levels of fear. But the problem is, is that at some point, most people allow fear to be the driver. 
They allow fear to control their emotions to the point where they never actually fully reach their full potential because fear is constantly in the front seat. And so she said, you're allowed to take fear with you on your journey, but it cannot sit in the front seat. It needs to go to the back of the van. And so I keep telling that to my team every single day, fear to the back of the van. Do something that puts you in front of fear every single day. Because you know what, when you do that and you compound that with your vision of how this company is a vehicle to help you get to your life vision, there's no nothing that can stop you. There's nothing that can hold you back. Because for me, the fear of only having one day, one hour a day with my son was greater than my fear of sharing my story on social media. The fear of me sitting at that job a year from now was greater than me reaching out and inviting five people to join me in my challenge group. The fear of my parents passing away and my kids not having a relationship with them because we don't live close and we can't afford to fly to go see them was greater than my fear to get over it, to get over my damn self. If you haven't read that book, you need to read that book. And just invite people, you guys. What we do is powerful. What we do matters. You are the only person holding yourself back from reaching your goals. If you haven't hit success club this month, you are the reason why you haven't hit success club this month. You have fear in the front seat. You control your goals. You control how hard you want to fight for your vision. Because when you know exactly what you want, there is nothing that can stop you. And when I knew exactly what I wanted my life vision to be, and when that resignation letter popped up on my Facebook feed and gave me hope that this could be it, I went all in. And I didn't look back. And I stopped caring what people would think. You want to know why? They're not the ones that have to sit at that job all day. They're not the ones that have to miss entire days with their kids. They're not the ones. I'm the one. I'm paying the price. So you make the decision to put fear in the backseat of your van and reach out and help people. I know it's scary, you guys. Every single day I'm scared. And you know what? I kind of love it. Because there was a time in my life when nothing scared me. Because I was bored. That's a life of boredom, you guys. Not being scared. Not being fulfilled. Being angry about your situation. That's boredom. You have an opportunity to do something about it. If your debt is paralyzing you, do something about it. If you don't have the funds to take a vacation, do something about it. If you don't have the income to go on a date night with your spouse, do something about it. If you don't have you know, the ability to have more time with your family, do something about it, you guys. This company is amazing and people need our help. A lot of people need our help. We're only just getting started with reaching people. But you have to make the decision to say goodbye to fear. Use it to fuel you. Because I want you to think about on the other, what's the other side of fear? What does that look like for you? If you let fear sit in the front seat, how does your story go? Rewrite the ending. Rechange it. Write your story the way you want it. And find a way to make it happen. My story was not ending the way it was currently. I wasn't going to allow it to happen. So I took action. And my fear of only inspiring maybe one person was so false. Because I didn't let it sit in the front seat. And if I did, I didn't let it stay very long. I've helped thousands of people. I've left my mark on this world. And you know what? At the end of the day, that's what means the most to me as a teacher leaving my mark on this world, helping people every single day, not just with fitness, but being a friend, being a you know positive source of, of Facebook when it's saturated with negativity, right? We are the light. We are, we are what people need. And you just need to reach out your hand and say, walk with me, join me. Let's do this together. I'm forever thankful that Carrie was brave enough to share her resignation letter that day to let me see that this is a legitimate opportunity so I don't have to wake up in the same place I was sitting that day. And a year later, I didn't because fear always sat in the back seat. I didn't let it sit in the front. 
letting it sit in the front was not getting me closer to my hopes and dreams for my family. And I hope that you guys find a way to say to fear, take a hike. You can stay in my minivan, but you cannot sit in the front. You are welcome to come with me. You are welcome to help me steer and navigate through unknown situations. You are welcome to help me make best decisions about who's in my tribe, who I want on my team, who I want to help, but you cannot sit in the front seat. Stay in the back. Be the voice that, you know, maybe comes through if it's absolutely necessary, but put fear all the way back in your minivan. All right, guys, I'm going to let you guys go before I start screaming through this through this screen. But um, I hope that was helpful for you guys. And I really hope that um, you guys know that this is yours to own. It really is. I don't have more friends. I don't I don't have um, any scripts I can share with you guys. I just knew exactly what I didn't want my life to look like. And I did something about it. So bye, guys. Have a great day.